Okay, we're back. We're back. We lost power, but we're back. So we'll continue. The blockchain <laughs> will always continue. Steve, so, absolute pleasure to see you here. Good to see Indoors. you again. Absolute pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. We were just talking. This is the real deal. Stop starting to rain, I the, swear to God. With, with the power. <laughs> It's really busy here, you oh can't see now because it's got dark. I just got a raindrop on me. Okay, so we're gonna do this. This is gonna be the first episode ever done in the rain with electronic equipment. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. hold on to something because we're gonna get shot. No, okay. Anyway, so we caught up last time with the crypto, London com blockchain. crypto yeah. compare event. Yep. And now we're back again in Malta. So we're not gonna do any city twice now. That's gonna be the rule. Okay. That's fair. So where's, the, where's next then after London and uh, uh, anywhere that Malta? Doesn't, anywhere that doesn't rain as Philippines. Much as yeah, Singapore. South Africa, Singapore. So we're going to do something. Anyway, so we're going to catch up a bit since last time. Because last time we were talking about the 20 country launch. Yes. We've, we've done some of that. I just did three more today. Three more. So we're Nigeria, Tanzania, and Uganda went live today. All in one go. So how many countries are we up to now? Oh, okay. Come on. Oh, you got me there. I got <laughs> really, really. I'm not very good with the maths anyway. No, you know it that. only takes us to six. But there was a huge six. bump here. There was, a, a, there huge was six. <laughs> but no. I did. I said before Christmas. And... We are, we've got blocks of countries we can launch. So we, I'm still, we may not hit 20, but let me tell you, we're going to be, we're going to be pushing up. Listen, I think the reality because, is th th there's ambition. There is, there is but what's, what we, what we realized is just launching willy nilly yeah. doesn't actually give us the result we want. What we want is adoption. Now, so in Brazil, which is the first one we launched, just one itty bitty by itself, massive place. Massive Brazil. country. Yeah. Last month we had $28,000 worth of top up equivalent in ETN direct from ETN. For your ETN. first month? It, uh, it wasn't the first month, it was about the third month in actually. Okay. Well, it takes a little bit of time, but, but yeah, okay. But, but, awesome. But, but the adoption rate is high. We're seeing a, a, a linear graph of, of adoption rate. We're seeing viral growth just wow. like, like we talked about. And and that's in one country. So Amazing. So you know what? You're know, doing it right. But you get a network effect right. too, right? Because you start with a small number of people. They tell their friends and they yeah. tell their friends. And, and that's 28 turns into 50 and, and, and 100 and One of the only places you can spend at the moment is on that airtime. As we start to roll out the rest of this ecosystem uh, into 2020, it's, it's going to So what, is, what does the ecosystem look like? I mean, don't tell us what and when, because I don't want to get you in trouble now with the community. I'm or sorry, community, for last night, but no, we don't want to get you in trouble with the community. We just want to get an idea. Uh, so the, 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 the bigger vision plan of the okay. things that make up that yeah. ecosystem to make it really hum. So, so the that first, most important that. one yeah. is that we launch it into masks. We've been working on it for about 18 months. It's, uh, it's totally changed from, from how I first saw it being, and a lot of that is from studies with real users. Yeah. Uh, we've just opened up the beta application, so if people want to, to, to be part of the beta testing, and we have been overwhelmed. So we've had 25,000 plus people on flight, uh, 7,500 people have given us absolutely so much detail, it's ridiculous. Wow. Uh, it took, took some 15 minutes to fill out that kind of thing. Uh, they, the level of detail is amazing. 20% of those people have said that this is what they do full-time for a living. They are part of the task economy full-time. So wow. we, what, one of my fears was that we, we needed to make sure it was fully populated before we start advertising it to attract sales. Because remember that what we've got is we've got people buying from the global north yeah. with credit card. And then the remittance part takes place in ETN at the back end, through some cover legal angling. But, but effectively what it means is you've got an unbanked person who gets value from the Global North, they pay on a credit card and value rise. Now, initially, all they've got to spend that on is that mobile top-up, which right. is not that exciting. Let me right. tell you, it's more exciting than 99.999% of all no, other projects. Because you need projects. more than, yeah, but still you need that more than just spending on one thing. Right. What we have to do is we have to show a start. We have to show that it is real and it can be used. And then we've got a sort of an ace up our sleeve that I'm not going to commit to what it is, right? But we have something really, really exciting. Nobody else has ever done it. I'm always I mean, getting him into trouble, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> well, I've been, I've been dangling this concept for, for a long time, but lawyers get in the way, regulations get in the way, everything from a legal and regulatory standpoint is now out of the way. Uh, so I can do what it is that we're trying to do. It's an integration of epic proportions. So, I don't know when it's going to happen because every so time we got to go to another country to talk about what epic means. Yeah, yeah, it might be, but, <laughs> but it will definitely conclude this. Okay, it will enough. conclude this ecosystem, right? So Good. at the moment, we've got is third party, okay, delivering it ahead time. But, but they, where do they get? They need to, they need to sell their ETN that they've taken. Right. Where do they sell it to? Well, any tasks is taking cash. It needs to buy ETN. So any tasks but like a task management. It's a, uh, it's a bit like fiber or freelancer. Or an outsourcing service of some sort where you can buy services, yep, digital, digital services. services. Online, like a marketplace. 
but we're not going to have enough ETN yeah. to 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 complete what we're doing because of demand. We, we're looking at looking at what demand we've got. Touchwood, everything will be good in terms of demand. So we will need to go buy our OTC desks. We've got two of these OTC desks. We've done an agreement with. They will be going out to the market with the Any Tasks cash that's coming in and purchasing ETN on the open market. So you create a self-sustaining ecosystem of supply on the one side, yeah. demand on the other, which will create a self-sustaining ecosystem, yeah. which will at least maintain a level of stability in the way the thing operates. And in 2020, right. quarter one, we'll have Task School Life. Awesome. Task School is our not-for-profit e-learning system to teach people basic tasks they can do on their phone. And that, people, when we show people what they can do, they had no idea that it was monetizing. So, for instance, if you literally just video someone drawing a picture, turn that into a quick stop frame animation, right. that's valuable as a social media feed to someone in the global world. So there were tons of things, there were literally tons of things you could do just with a mobile phone. Get them in, start them working, start them earning some of those US dollars, start them earning some of that, gets remitted in ETN, and then as long as we've got a nice ecosystem in place, which I can't quite reveal all of it, but as long as they've got places they can spend it. Yeah. And remember that even without me introducing them, there's nothing to stop someone entrepreneurial collecting that ETN up, and if, as long as they're banked, they can jump into an exchange and do an exchange and make commission. Right. Because we're not charging any commission. So some, uh, there are different platforms with different rates. Fiverr, for instance, charges 20%. Any tasks has no fee at all. So if you sell your task for five dollars, you get five dollars worth of ETN. Nice. Right. So now you've got 20% to play with. So if someone entrepreneurial goes, well, hang on a minute. If I collect up this ETN, go to an exchange, it costs me three or four percent to get it into my local fiat. I'm up on the deal. So we're, we're creating uh, uh, entrepreneurial an environment for entrepreneurial absolutely, behavior, right? Absolutely. Right. So what would you tell? Let's say you've got a you know the big user community that's listening to this, not just you know investors who want to understand how it's going to affect their lives. Are there things that we could tell the, the user community about, you know, whether it's a reassurance or it's something that's coming or something that we're going to do that's going to give them that feeling of, gosh, we're really connected with you, the audience, the not the audience, but the, the user community itself. So what are we doing that's hooking into them so that we know that, that, we, that they know, we know their mindset and that we're solving a problem? Well, right at the beginning, people got excited about what I was doing. Yeah. And before the team grew to the size it is now, and it was just me and a handful of coders, and we sat there and said, you know what? And you were with the leash going like this because you're oh, not no, the coder. Not at all. No, no, no. You're not a coder, coder, are you? Yeah, I'm a coder. You are a coder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Albeit, everybody would Apple laugh. Apple Basic? Everybody would laugh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I'm, I'm a Perl coder. Anybody who Googles P E R L, I'm a Perl yeah, okay. coder. I can code in PHP and I have yeah, C. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so, so cool. But so you're a geek in disguise. Geek in disguise. I'm nowhere near as good as my team. My team are literally awesome. Uh, and I, I take my help to them every day. Their, their coding skills are way above. I'm going to show up with a hat next time called Geek in Disguise. Yeah. <laughs> Chess club. Sorry. So, so we diverge uh, a little bit there. So, so uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, that's my background. So right. uh, from a technology base. And I, I've always, so I've got a digital marketing agency that started with me doing the tech. And I've got a social media uh, management company that again started with me doing the tech with, with the guys that have, have, have come into this. So, yeah. Um, yeah, ultimately, um, what, what we said right at the beginning, what, what excited people was mass adoption of crypto products. And we're still not seeing it. We, we might see projects with loads and loads of people trading them, for, try, trying to, to make money out of sure. buying and selling. Yeah. But, but in terms of actual adoption, that's what we were set out to do. And that's why we knew we needed to, to, to run an ICO and sell some ETN to, right. to get funds in to do it because we have had to build this ecosystem. Yeah. Then the first thing we did, we went out to South Africa and we thought we would just drop out payment system and it would all just happen. Right, right, right. We dropped it out, we were on the ground, we learned loads and loads. We changed the payment system. But what we realized there is actually people need a way not just to be given something, it's like a charity and we're not a charity. Right. They need a way to earn it. And we were relying a little bit too much on, on the market, entrepreneurially bringing a weight to earn it. And we said, okay, well, we can, we can lead these people in, not just with creating a platform in which they can earn it. Right. And originally, that, that, when I first said that was going to launch, which is probably a year ago, yeah. the, the, that was crypto to crypto, ETN to ETN. So somebody buying would have had to go off to an exchange, buy some Bitcoin, transfer it to an exchange at ETN, buy some ETN, get the ETN into a wallet, and buy a task. 
it was never going to happen. I, I run a digital agency. We buy services from Fiverr and from Upwork. And if somebody had said to me, this is a way to get it 20%, 30%, 50% cheaper, I still wouldn't have done it. It was too much right. work. So there was a lot of legal wrangling and a lot of redesign to do to get it into fiat. So the purchase takes place in fiat and that's exciting. This is all about steps to mass adoption. And that's what I promised I'd bring. Absolutely confident I'll bring. So, okay, so let's talk about mass adoption for a second. So you, you and I both know that mass adoption is tough. The, yeah. the community are looking for ways that they can engage easily to make their lives easier. So you're sitting on the inside of this now, trying to make change, to build systems that enable the average person, I don't mean average, but as an average, but as in the non-crypto user, to be able to participate in a crypto-based environment. What would you say that the, the biggest challenges are that you've encountered or faced over the last six months or year, or that you're facing today that are preventing you from moving things to the level where you want to be to enable our user community to get what they want? Well, I mean, our user community at the moment are probably not the, the users that we're going to have eventually. Right, so... You know, we've had this huge amount of beta uh, uh, users who have said they're going to come on, which is amazing. So thank you very much for anyone who said they're going to be a part of the beta program. I really appreciate it. And they're going to help we us... We love populate. you, beta users. We do, we do. <laughs> and they're going to help us populate. So they're going to get gigs on there, as, as some people call them. Some people call them tasks, whatever we're calling it. I call it... Well, it's a good segue to my next question on the gig economy, okay. but we'll get to that. Well, what we found with the word gig is we're out in Southeast Asia, or in Africa, the word gig did not translate well at all. Okay. As soon as you gave some of the word gig to translate, the word music started coming in. Music festival, music concerts, etc. Really? Yeah, because okay. gigging was always about bands. Aha. Uh -huh. And so we, we had a very bad translation problem, and so we realized that we're either going to fight this uphill battle of education, or we rename. And task translates extremely well. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Hence the change from gig fair okay. to any task. Uh, okay, so let's go back to our adoption yeah. problem. So, so, from an adoption so it's not, not the 5% that I'm worried about. It's, no. I, I'm, what I'm worried about is the 95% who are yeah. looking at this thing called Electronium going, what is this thing yeah. and why well, does it matter to me? Why Why would someone adopt it? Why would I adopt it? Why would I use your system, Richard? Well, and the answer is, You'd only do something if it benefits you. That's the only reason you'd use anything, isn't it? That it right. benefits you in some way. It might benefit you from enjoyment, might benefit you financially, might benefit you in any number of ways, but it has to give you a benefit. And most cryptocurrency, we are, as, as, as the community that I've been in since probably 2015, maybe 2014, we, we're passionate about what it can do. Sure. And so we're involved. But, it, but the only benefit it was giving, as it happens, we've all done well from the early adopters, you know, from this gain in terms of, of, of an investment vehicle. That's not what cryptocurrency should be. No. The benefit should be that people that are outside of, of the existing financial structure can join it. And if sure. you can join, join that global digital economy through any cryptocurrency, but we're making it ETF, right. that's a wonderful thing. Well, in fact, shouldn't it really be the blockchain that's the enabler, the cryptocurrency being ETN is there as part of that transactional process, but in fact, the over the, the underlying infrastructure being blockchain and cryptocurrency is the enabler, but the real solution is the, is the <laughs> tech that you're building on top, which is giving users the access to uh, wallets, payment transactions, Instant payment mobile payment top up, People, people gloss over instant payment. Digital services. But if you're buying something from a shop, you have to have instant payment. You can't right. go into a shop and wait for confirmations. So our instant payment system sold that a long time ago. Right. And we thought, okay, that's going to nail it. Now it's absolutely critical. So we had to do it, and it was one of the steps towards it. But now what we're doing is we're building this full ecosystem, and we have ridiculous things. And of course, the NGOs that we've got involved, yeah. they haven't come into play fully yet. But those NGOs are trusted on the ground. We've chosen vocational NGOs, we're yeah. educating them about blockchain, we're educating them about crypto, we're educating them about trust, because this industry is full of Well, deceit. it's government, and so of course there's also an element of, well, you know, it's regulated and not regulated, and why should we, and then governments are not typically getting involved in technology early, they're usually late adopters yeah. to most things, yeah. you know, trying to get your council bill updated in the UK, and you know, it's still like an old outdated system, or hey, your TV, yeah, so how many stamps can I get before I get my, my TV license renewed. Oh, <laughs> BBC fan. <laughs> yeah, what's that? I just have like, you know, I'm a, I, I cut the cord a long time ago and I'm still expected to pay for my TV license because I have a television in my house. But we're getting into politics. Oh, no. Scary time. Sorry, Brexit. No, okay. 
<laughs> or Brent? Don't, don't so, even get me or do we call that a Brenter? I had a three hour flight <laughs> sitting next to somebody talking about having got Brexit for three hours. So, well, well, Brexit or Brenter, it. right? No, sorry, we got to change topic. But no, okay, so we get so get uh, look, I, I, I'm more confident now than I've ever been that we will achieve what we said, which is mass adoption of cryptocurrency. Uh, NGOs can help us on the ground, they're all in place, not all of them, but, but enough are on the ground and in place, that will encourage on more and more and more. And we've got a platform that we're going to have no problem selling the tasks on, because people can list them cheaper than the competitors. Right. right? They can list them cheaper because if you're earning 30 cents an hour, or a dollar an hour in what you're doing, and you can do a side task, something else, and it and makes it money. Five dollars an hour, but the person Why would listing you do it, it right? elsewhere is doing it for seven dollars an hour. Suddenly, there's a saving. So I, I genuinely believe that we can undercut the market whilst the global north are saying, you know what? I, instead of me buying something that, that is questionable because I'm forcing someone into a low saving, I'm, I'm actually buying something at one of the highest. Well, I mean, look. The reality is, a lot of the services that we get, the service providers themselves, whether it's using fiber, other digital services or whatever it is, they're actually not getting what we're paying them, right? If I pay someone for $5 an hour for service, they're only getting 80% of that at the most. Yeah. Sometimes less, because there's service fees, and then there's service fees, and then there's, you know, I, I had a Patreon account for a while that I was running, and I killed it. And the reason I killed it was, for every $5, I was getting about two, two and a half. Why bother being a content provider, trying to interview people and get content out there, and then not making anything from doing it? So. You know, I'm waiting for you know Electronium to start providing digital services for me to provide my videos out there for the community. Yeah, well, I mean, ideally, somebody else would be wink, doing wink, it. You know, we we <laughs> so the, the task school part we've, we've definitely embraced this as a not-for-profit, and you sure. know, we'll absorb the hosting cost of that because that has really excited the NGOs. All the NGOs are, uh, are all about well, not all of them are about the ones we've chosen are about vocational. You know, anything vocational. They want to bring people out of poverty, bring people into financial. Inclusion. Yeah. And so giving them something that teaches a skill that is vocational and can be sold right. is great. But if they're not banked, they can't sell the skill no, on those other platforms. And by the way, yeah. I am not saying we are we want to do anything bad to those other platforms. I love those other platforms. I use them in my other businesses. And if the other platforms are listening, take ETN, right? And then you've got this massive, massive market of more than a billion oh, brilliant. participants. So, 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 so Electronium could actually be the backbone for everybody and also at the same time provide your own service that others can compete against. So yeah. someone has to do it. Yeah, yeah, we've got to be a pathfinder. Because yeah. actually in crypto, somebody has to be the pathfinder. So we've realized we've got pathfinder the whole ecosystem and that's fine, we're doing it. So if people want to get involved with the electronic and do something meaningful that adds value, not just to their own lives, but also to enhance their lives by by services or by getting involved with you know the network or with the business to provide a service into a country. What do they need to? What can they do to actually hook in and get involved in, and do something that's meaningful right now? That allows them opportunity. Go to our Twitter feed, twittercom electronium. The very top pinned link is to become part of the beta program for any tasks. If, if all you do is go on there and have a look at what other people are doing and say, actually, do you know what, I could buy one of those and buy something for $3 or something on your credit card, you're helping build that ecosystem and, and test it out. Once that system is fully live, then have a look because you'll find that there are competitive tasks and people that are and people that are doing digital services could launch their digital services in the electronic. So that's so there's your call to action right there. So anybody doing digital services yep. or not doing digital services that wants to get into it, yeah. here's an opportunity to jump in and do it in an area where the unbanked need to be banked. By the way, here's a really interesting one for you. Did you know this is really weird research? I was doing some research on the unbanked because you know it's a passion of mine to fix this as well. Um, 30% of Poland, Poland in Europe, yeah. right? I thought Poland and Europe were pretty involved, but Poland, 30% is unbanked. Yeah, That's staggering. Yeah, and actually, when you look at the, uh, across Europe as an example, it's actually in the high 20 percentage of people who do not have bank accounts. And I'm not talking about the, the Muslim immigrants that have been the recent kind of things that have gone on in the last couple of years. I'm talking about across the, the, you know, the, the economy across Europe. It is staggering how big it is and it just gives me it's like for me it's a call to action to say we need to do something to fix that too because it cannot be that you know in a developed country like in you know UK or in Germany or yeah someone broke a glass there sorry about that but you know, it wasn't me the drink is flowing here yeah the, the drink is flowing the rain stopped the rain stopped
No, but that to me is a really like this is a call to action to everybody to yeah, yeah. jump in, and it doesn't have to be because you're in Brazil or in Nigeria or Tunis was it Tunisia you said no. Oh, and, uh, Nigeria, uh, Tanzania, Tanzania. Uganda, right? right, sorry. Okay, there are. There I don't want to say the wrong country and then get get, get, get trolled for it. <laughs> Tunisia is not there yet. No, Tunisia is right. not there yet. So sorry about that. So, but other countries are on the list. But we're not going to say. I'm not going to yeah, ask because yeah, yeah. I don't, don't want to get you in trouble. Like, no. so, uh, I, mean, I will put a link, by the way, to the previous episode where we had the conversation, so people can just catch up if they didn't yeah, see it previously. Uh, and and I didn't. Uh, people are saying, "Oh, you promised this by this." I sort of hinted that we that we might be able to. Listen, well, it's a business. I, never made a I mean, the reality. But, yeah. but I am absolutely striving to deliver that because I understand that people took it that way. Yeah. And I am striving to deliver it. But what people want. Is they want us to deliver the business. They want us to deliver what we promised the value. to deliver, right? the value and, yeah. the, and, the, and the adoption. So I'm not going to just pull a lever and hit 20 countries and then not do the right thing on the ground in each of those countries, not have the NGOs in place, not have the infrastructure in place. Listen, we've both been business owners and one thing we've both learned, you, you start a business, you have a plan, and things change. Yeah. Like, like you and I talked about off camera, there are challenges in South Africa with regulation. There are challenges in other countries with regulation. The global economy is shifting. There are problems in Chile, there's problems in Venezuela, there's problems in Lebanon, in Egypt, that we didn't even know about six months ago when we met. Well, Venezuela was already ongoing, but at Hong Kong. I mean, these things weren't even part of our discussion when we met six months ago. These things changing and regulation changing will affect how a business goes, and we have to shift and adjust yeah, course, yeah. to moving. Uh, and crypto runs hot and cold, absolutely. So yeah. we've seen this in, in regulatory environments all over the place. Crypto, the, the, the yeah. suddenly one, one one minister might be all up for crypto, and so it's, it's all guns blazing. And then so don't worry, we're going to keep you accountable. But at the same yeah. time, no, at right. the same time, it we know right. things are changing. I, made the I know. So I, no, no, I'm, I'm accountable. I know, and I'm accountable. You know, everything I've ever said, people have, people sometimes pick back at what I've said, but have a look back at everything look, I've ever said. Look, if you deliver value. We always, you. always right. find the hurdles in the way, we overcome them, and we will then and get And I think that's what's We've awesome about what Electronium is doing, to be honest. And that's why you're here, and that's why we like having you on the show, because we want to see results, we want to see value, we want to see adoption, and it's critical because the only way that cryptocurrency and blockchain is going to work is if we continue to push it and enable people who aren't in crypto to be able to be a part of it, participate in it, and add services so people can get involved. Oh, one other thing I just wanted to get out there. Some yeah, sure. People, somebody I was speaking to earlier said, so are you trying to displace Bitcoin? And I just want to make sure that we understand that that is not what ETN is about. We're a regulated KYC crypto. We are about financial inclusion. We are about mass adoption. But remember that we become an on-ramp and off-ramp to Bitcoin really easily. Right. So the, the likes of atomic swaps and things are not in place yet, but it's inevitable that it's going to come. Yeah. At which point you've got the ability to earn ETN or through any tasks and from other things. And swap into other currencies. Tasks. If you can then jump into any other crypto, it gives you other avenues. And I, I'm a big believer in the cryptocurrency space yeah. in general, of course, otherwise I wouldn't be here. And uh, and I'm certainly not trying to go head to head. I'm not trying to be the new Ethereum. I'm not trying to be the new Bitcoin. I'm just trying to be no. one piece of the puzzle. That's Listen, delivered. I mean, we have how many currencies on the planet right now, which is a lot. I don't even know how many number them, right? And and not every currency trades with every other. So, you know, if you're in Gambia and you want to change to another currency like the dinar or something like that, there isn't a trade fair. You've got to go through the dollar and back, right? So there's a lot of that kind of trouble as it is. And there's a lot of currencies. So to say there's only one currency in crypto would, it would imply that the world wants a single global currency, which may well be a future, future, future where we go, which would be super cool, wouldn't it? But the reality is, why can't we have 20 or 30 or 50 or 100 yeah. cryptocurrencies yeah. that all provide different values that are cross country are rather than currency by country? Because one thing that drives me crazy is when I travel, and if you want to go to another country, I got to convert my coin, my money, one currency to another, you know, and that's it's unfortunate. Now having a single currency that's, this is a paradigm shift, right? To go from currency by country to currency by service is a major, major shift that I don't think people realize is occurring. Bitcoin's the only currency that's really a global currency that everyone's comfortable with. I'm, well, sorry, my Litecoin friends and my, my wife was also part of the foundation. Judo Chuck. Yeah, I know, Judo. <laughs> Your master Shifu won't like that very much. By the way, Shifu in, in Chinese means master. So I just said master, 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 yeah. So no, master Shifu won't like that. But you know, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash. One day I hope to be master, master, master. Master, master, master. Shifu, Shifu, master. Shifu, yeah. Shifu, master. Yeah. Oh, uh, drinks may have been flowing. No, maybe not. So yeah, so the, the, the point is that, you know, we're going to end up with multiple currencies. And 
I think the fact that we move from a currency that's based on country to a, to a currency based on a global service is a major paradigm shift that people just need to get their heads around. It's going to take time. But I think you guys have started that process, and I think it's exciting to see where you've gotten to. Um, and I want to keep seeing how you develop it because it's exciting. And like I said, the next time it's going to have to be Dubai or Singapore or wherever, wherever you choose. <laughs> well, stay super. Absolutely. Great fun, Thank Richard. That's a pleasure as always. Today. Glad to see you here in uh, Malta. Anything? Are you presenting on stage? Uh, two two panels. I'm on with on Friday uh, with uh, Acon, who is a legend in. Uh, oh, so is it like Acon? Acoin versus Electr Electronium. Well, Who's going to win now? Well, okay, there's room for everyone, isn't yeah. there? So I mean, what, I'll, what I'll try to do is I'll try to record some of that and I'll capture yeah, some right, of that yeah. and put that out there for everybody to see it because that content won't be available unless someone records it and puts it out there. So I'll, I'll make a point to try to make sure those are recorded for you. Super. Thanks, Super. everybody. Thank you, everybody, for checking in with the Coin Chat with Richard Else. And I'm Steve Good. See you all soon.